Hi, I'm Jeff McIntosh from Empire State Darts, and tonight I'm going to go over Team 01 strategy and the freeze rule. Basically, by definition, the freeze rule is in order for you to be able to go out, your partner score has to be lower than the combined score of your two opponents. So, to basically illustrate that for you, what I've got here is I've got the uh, a sample score here. We got team A, team B, player one and three on team A, player two and four on team B. And uh, player one here has got 15 points, player three has got 51 for a combined score of 66. And player two has got 30, and player four has got 60 for a combined score of 90. Now, if player number one is up, all right, he's got 15. He could throw his 15 and go out because his partner's got 51 and the combined score of his opponents is 90. Now if that was different and let's say player number three had a score left of 101 then player one would technically be frozen and he would not be able to go out because his partner's score at 101 is greater than the combined score of the two opponents at 90. For player one to go and throw that 15 points and go out, he would actually forfeit the game to team B and they would actually lose that game. So that's basically what the freeze rule is. And sometimes the freeze rule can be used to your advantage, especially if you are attempting to block a player, uh, particularly the one after the person shooting, from being able to throw an out shot and win a game. And sometimes it can be used as an act of defense. Um, depending on how far down and how close the score is. A lot of times when you get somebody who's down, and let's say for example that this guy's got a score of 40, okay, let's color that in a little bit better, now that's a combined score of 55, okay, and uh, let's say we're at the point where, for example, uh, player number four is up right now, and we've got 15 and 40 here for a total of 55, 30 and 60 for a total of 90. And let's say player four here, a little bit shaky on being able to throw the out shot. Maybe admittedly not the better uh, shooter of the group, but basically he's in the game at this point because he's got 60 left. He's not that far away from the other guys. And let's say uh, you know he throws a dart uh, and he gets himself down to a single digit with one dart in hand. Well, as an act of strategy, and albeit this is not always a popular move to do this because I don't think anybody appreciates being frozen. But let's say, for example, player number four here, he threw a couple of darts and he got himself down to about, oh, say he got himself down to uh, nine points and he got afraid to throw the nine because of where it is on the dartboard. If he throws high or he throws low or he throws a double or triple, obviously he's going to bust. And if he busts, he goes all the way back up to 60 again. So let's say, for example, he passed his last dart and left himself with nine points. Now, when player number one comes up to shoot, player one, again, is frozen because player three's got 40, player two and player four are a total of 39. Had player four busted, player one would be ready you know, to go out, no problem, when he's down to 15. So sometimes you can use the freeze rule to your advantage. And uh, again, sometimes it's not always the most popular thing to find yourself frozen, especially when you find out that you know a person passed part of their turn. Because if I was player one, I'd be expecting player four to throw that third dart. For them to pass that, in reality, is a pretty interesting part of strategy. And just to confirm it, it is part of both our rule book and the National Darts Association, the NDA's rule book, that a player can pass all or part of their turn at any point in time during, uh, during a game. So, is it shenanigans? Not really. Good strategy, um, brilliant strategy actually, if, you know, if you're that concerned about busting. Um, some people don't have a fear of throwing that dart and they'll just take the consequences. But if you really want to win the game and in a tight match, you got to play a little strategy. Um, sometimes that's the way to go and sometimes that's how you can turn around and beat a better team by a little bit better strategy. If you have any comments or any suggestions about what I've said here feel free to send me an email at esdarts at hotmail.com. This is Jeff McIntosh from Empire State Darts. Thanks a bunch for watching.